Hello and welcome to Talking Tolkien. For this video I thought it might be nice to have a look back at the whole of 2020 in the world of Tolkien and see what were some of the best releases of the year, uh, maybe some Christmas ideas and um, yeah just have a look back on what's happened and then we'll also look ahead to next year. There's some exciting releases coming out next year and um, I'll do a couple of frequently asked questions at the end as well. Um, I was going to do it to mark 3,000 subscribers to my channel, which I've now got 3,000 subscribers to my channel. Um, but it's flown up well above that, so thanks everyone for um, yeah, liking the channel enough to click that subscribe button. It's, um, yeah, it's been really, uh, really encouraging. So going back then, 2020, it's obviously been like a year unlike any other. And, you know, in the future, we'll all be telling you know, people. When we're old, we'll be telling like little kids, you know, oh yeah, 2020, it was that year. Um, just like, you know, we reflect now back on the, the, the Second World War, I think it'll be that kind of level. But I'm not going to reflect too much on that in this video. I hope everyone's safe and well. But um, yeah, I'll hide away in the world of Tolkien. So back in January, um, started tragically really with the death of Christopher Tolkien, who, as I'm sure you're aware, J.R.R. Tolkien's son, and he was really his, um, he continued the work that his father had done throughout. So when J.R.R. Tolkien died in 73, the only real Middle Earth books we'd got were The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. But through his son Christopher's work, you know, we were given an embarrassment of riches really with um, The Silmarillion, Unfinished Tales, and then into the huge 12 volume History of Middle Earth. Um, you know, there's far more than that when you look at the the more recent books, um, all the way up to, you know, when he was 92, releasing um, The Fall of Gondolin. So, yeah, so he's obviously a towering figure in the, the world of Tolkien. I'm sure his loss is, is very, you know, very much felt. Um, but what a legacy to leave behind. Phenomenal. So, yeah, then we moved into some books this year. Now, as far as Tolkien goes, I think... I had to think about what, what I would recommend as the, the Tolkien-related book of the year. And I'd say this is th that's been written by Tolkien rather than that's associated with him. And the book I'd have to say that has um, blown me away this year is this thing. Is this kind of cheating to have four books? No, it's a box set. It's cool. Um, I've put some, some mylar on it so it's a bit more shiny than it was when I did the video. But, um, yeah, this was just a stunning set, you know, and everything about this I think was done really well. I can't really see, and I've been reading these now, and we've had the more recent Unfinished Tales as well in a similar vein, but just everything about these books is is really good. Um, and for the price, I think, yes, yeah, it's, it's just, just a great re release. There we are. No excuse not to have a look at the pictures in there. So they're nice as well because they're consistent, which, you know, collectors like that. So the books fit in well with, say, stuff like The Fall of Gondolin, um, the recently announced Silmarillion as well, which is coming out next year, we'll look at in a minute. Um, that's that's going to fit in the style as well. So I think it's nice to have that level of consistency and also like a quality consistency. So we had the deluxe editions, which were those slip covers that have been coming out for uh, 10 years or so now. But the, the, again, the consistency and quality with them, they weren't always the same size or height or, you know, the, the quality of binding was, was not great. So, um, so it's good to have, you know, got past that and we've got all these, I just happen to have that one here, you know, they just look good, all these, and they fit together well. The illustrations are second to none, you know, I think we've got the three leading Tolkien illustrators in there. So, so great books. So yeah, basically this is the one I would recommend. This is the box set, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, each with individual books. So rather than like the, the um, 60th anniversary, which is one combined book, quite tricky to read, you've got these and you can read them individually without breaking your neck trying to carry them. So we've got that. Um, now as far as non-Tolkien books go, so books that are written about Tolkien but weren't written by him, if that makes sense. Uh, I think there's one this year for me that towers above the others. It's not one I've done a video on, I'd meant to, but life has been a bit crazy this year as I'm sure you can appreciate. Uh, but this is it. It's The Worlds of J.R.R. Tolkien by John Garth. Now, John Garth is a um, a noted Tolkien writer. He wrote um, Tolkien and the Great War, which was the research, you know, that, that had really been done on his role in, in the First World War and how that 
affected him really. An amazing book in itself. Um, but this is one that goes into the places um, and where he was inspired, you know, how he was inspired by places. So it's, it's richly illustrated, loads of uh, information here. I, I think it's brilliant. Someone who likes, you know, the older style of things. It's, um, it's a really good book, well researched as well. Uh, we get things like this, you know, where he's comparing Tolkien's pictures with, with places that inspired it. So yeah, the places that inspired Middle Earth. Okay, just to keep the video short, I won't go on about that too much. Maybe one day I'll, I will do a video on that. But yeah, I wholeheartedly recommend this for the um, anyone who's into Tolkien. It's a it's a really well written, researched, and illustrated book. So they're my two Tolkien books for the year. <sighs> right, let's put twenty twenty to one side and look forward to twenty twenty one, which is going to be a Amazing year, I'm sure it'll be the, the roaring 20s again, I hope. Um, so as far as books we've got coming, now for me most excitingly is uh, The Nature of Middle Earth. Uh, and this is by uh, Carl Hostetter, who is a well-respected Tolkien academic writer. Now what he did, he'd been working with um, Christopher Tolkien before Christopher Tolkien's death um, on gathering J.R.R. Tolkien's final writings about Middle Earth which I don't think many of us had any idea that there were any writings left. But yeah, he, he's worked with Christopher Tolkien and he's taken that work forward. And next year we're going to get a book, say, called The Nature of Middle Earth, which should be, um, yeah, really insightful. I think looking, looking forward to that, it's going to have some original writing in. Some bits, I believe, have been published before, but I believe the bulk of it is new material. So, you know, that's really exciting, I think. Um, also, we've got to look forward in books, we've got the Silmarillion, um, the illustrated version of that. So following on from the success of, obviously, Unfinished Tales, we've got the Silmarillion. Now, I did a video uh, a while ago, which I'll link up there, about the Silmarillion and all the versions. And as you can see, there was a lot of illustrated versions of that that had previously come out, illustrated by Ted Nasmith. Um, now, this one's going to be in a similar vein, but the style will fit in better with the uh, the later editions. So it will, you know, it'll fit alongside this one and all the others that we spoke about. So again, for people that like consistency, like me, that's um, that's a really welcome decision. There's also a deluxe edition of that, which again, that looks that looks stunning. Actually, I love the colour of that. Hopefully, you can see a picture of that up here now. Okay, so we've got that to look forward to. So we've got Nature of Middle Earth, that's 24th of June, I believe that's slated for at the moment. But before that, we've got the Sil the Silmarillion, which is in March 2021. Um, other things, we've got, um, this is Tales from the Perilous Realm, which is hardback. This is out of print. This was actually quite tricky to, to get hold of when I got it a few years ago. Um, but in here, it's got... Um, Tolkien's small stories, so it contains Roverandum, Farmer Giles of Ham, The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, Smith of Wooten Major, and Leaf by Niggle. So they're all in here, and there's some nice uh, sketches throughout by uh, Alan Lee, I believe. Yeah, Alan Lee. Um, but like I said, that's, that's been out of print for a while. There's been a um, US edition, but it's not the same size or anything. But what's nice about this is it fits in great with that style, so they all go nicely on the bookshelf. You're probably wondering why I've gone on about this, because I believe that's getting re-released as well next summer. So again, if you're after consistency, that's a really good compendium of the um, Tolkien's short stories. So keep an eye out for that as well. Okay, um, finally the thing for 2021, I suppose, to, to mention. There might be an Amazon series. I'm not going to get too bogged down in this because, to be honest, I don't really know anything about it. I'm not big on social media. I just kind of hide away. So I don't know um, how it's going to be. But I suspect for the money they're throwing at it, it could be pretty pretty impressive. But we'll see. Is it even coming next year? Hopefully. I, I don't think anyone knows, do they? But, but yeah, we'll see. It's certainly something to look forward to and see what it's like. Okay. Before I end, we'll do... Um, oh, God. Ah, here's something. So this year, for me, I a few years ago, I gathered all the history of Middle Earth. I spent time scouring eBay, A books, a few sites to get first editions of all of the Christopher Tolkien um, history of Middle Earth in hardback. Which I remember, like, 
years and years ago I was trying to get them but you know I didn't have much money then and I was always looking and it just got certainly some of the later volumes were ridiculously expensive they were like hundreds of pounds so anyway prices have gone down a bit now and it's become fairly attainable to get certainly the majority of them and I got them all probably two years ago now since I, I got the whole set which is great to have the first editions of all of the, the history of Middle Earth very proud on my bookshelf however um, for some reason this one has been an absolute nightmare to find so this is volume four Shaping of Middle Earth um, I've got the Harper Collins re-release from like 1992 is it uh, but 1991 but I, yeah I haven't had any luck in finding the first edition of this um, by um, George Allen and Unwin which was the original publishers um, I just haven't found it anywhere so if anyone happens to have a copy of that in good condition please let me know um, I would happily take that off your hands because it's it's causing me no end of trouble and uh, I'm sick of the eBay notifications coming through uh, for like two years now so that's what I hope for my 2021 so hopefully at the end of 2021 I can do a video on this and I can say yes look I've now got this new book but let's not get too excited so finally, uh, frequently asked questions, uh, keep this succinct. Well done if you're still sticking with this, I'm uh, impressed. Um, Frodo's journey, I'm always asked what's going on with Frodo's journey. And the truth is, when I started doing that, I was, I was really unwell and basically it was a way for me to feel I was spending my time productively because I was bed bound, um, whilst still like, um, yeah, just doing something like even mental exercise was exhausting. but. Um, but I did it. So, so yeah, it was very much at that time, um, happily, like I'm, I'm better now. So I'm not having to put myself through that. I'm able to like, you know, work and, and, and carry on as normal. So it's meant I've got far less free time to spend a weekend as it was doing on those videos. So that's really the reason that I haven't done any more. And also like, that was a bad time, you know, I was really unwell at the time. So almost to go back to that, as much as it was a nice refuge and you can lose yourself in Middle Earth, which is, you know, a good thing to do when, you know, life is an absolute bug. Um, yeah, as much as that's good and, you know, it's kind of don't want to look back too much. So probably, I'll never say never, but it's unlikely I'll do another Frodo's journey. I did do a draft of the next part, but it's um, it's tricky as well because the, the game's got so old as well. I mean, I remember getting that game, 2007 Lord of the Rings Online. So where are we now? It's like 14 years old. It's venerable, isn't it, really, to have a game going that old? But I heard there's going to be a new um, RPG, online RPG for Lord of the Rings. So potentially there could be a, um, a remake of Frodo's Journey, which would be quite interesting. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. But that's the honest truth um, with what's going on with it. Uh, another question I get, what, what got me into Tolkien um, in the first place? So when I was at, this was at junior school, I can't remember exactly what year, but um, I was okay at reading, wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, uh, but my friend was the best reader in the class by far, and he was, he was amazing at everything. And uh, I remember one day the teacher went to him, as I sat next to him, and gave him a book, and he said, because you're reading so good, um, you can read this book. And it was a paperback, and it had a big waterfall on the front, and it just looked amazing. Uh, I'd never seen anything like it before. I noticed the word Hobbit across the top, I thought, wow I'd, I'd love to be able to read like so well that i could have that book so i set off reading i asked my friend he didn't even read that book he just was like no it's not my kind of thing um and then i like, left the school and you know moved on but um yeah so for years i didn't really see it and then someone bought me it was a, an ex-girlfriend bought me the um the the old hobbit you know with the nice first edition cover it wasn't the first edition you know it was whatever was the one at the time but um yeah i finally read it so and that was only like a year i think before the films came out which you know blew everything up then so then i really got hooked into it but yeah really it was that um that waterfall at school which i've never found that paperback actually i don't know it must be out there someone have to have a look so that's it i think how long have we been going for quite a while thank you so much if you're still watching this video now um let's end with this uh, amazing christmas gift i don't know if you can see this i really hope you can it's a mug that my daughter's got me for my birthday. It says, I love you like a hobbit loves a second breakfast, um, with a quote there from J.R.R. Tolkien. Now, two things on this. One is uh, that's not a Tolkien quote. And two, if we can, oh, come on, if 
if we can get it to read, if you can read that, J.R.R. Tolkien, just see if you can spot anything wrong with the spelling on there. So, bottoms up. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great 2021 and um, I look forward to seeing you later. Thanks again. Bye.